Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I usually don't cover PC gaming news, but as a channel usually focusing on older hardware, I read something today that hit me a little personally. As of April 2018, or at the time of this upload, Nvidia have officially ended support for Fermi graphics card architecture. As an avid fan of Nvidia's older cards running on an architecture with driver support spanning 8 years, I thought we'd pay tribute to a series that produced some of the most memorable and popular graphics cards to ever release. Among the long list include many we've tested here in the past, ranging from entry level cards like the GT520 through to mid range legends like the GTX 560 Ti all the way up to high end GPUs like the GTX 480, two of which in SLI would be enough to heat a small family home. So let's take a look back at where it all started as well as remind ourselves of how a few of my favourite Fermi cards hold up in modern times. It all started on the 26th of March 2010 when Nvidia launched the first and flagship Fermi GPU, the GTX 480, or at least they were supposed to, but it was made available generally during early April, along with the less powerful and cheaper GTX 470, both retailing at $499 and $349 respectively. The $499 or £400 GTX 480 featured 480 CUDA cores, a 700MHz core clock, a 924MHz memory clock and 1.5GB of GDDR5 VRAM and Nvidia recommended a 600 watt power supply with the need for a 6 pin and 8 pin power connector. Under load you could have expected temperatures to exceed 90 degrees and speaking of heat, a sunburnt version of myself tested this card back in June of 2017 in comparison to an HD5870 and found that it could still keep up in some modern games. Despite my love for this card, the 480 wasn't liked by everyone because of the aforementioned heat issues, so later the same year, the reworked successor, the GTX 580, was launched based on the GF110 Fermi refresh chip. The 580 was quieter, cooler, and offered about 20% more performance than the 480, releasing with the same 1.5GB of VRAM at an identical launch price of $499. Until the launch of AMD's Radeon 6970 the following month, many PC gamers speculated as to whether or not that card would knock the 580 off the top spot, but it didn't, and so the 580 remained king. Even when I tested it back in September of last year, seven years after the initial launch, the card had no problems running some of the latest games available. I also explored the power of the rare Mars 2, which combined two GTX 580s and originally retailed for over £1,000 or dollars. Both the 480 and 580 can now be found for a fraction of their original prices on used marketplaces. But now let's fast forward a couple of months and focus on Nvidia's slightly newer and more affordable Fermi offerings. In January of 2011, the GTX 560 Ti was launched at $249, or just under £200 in the UK. This was my dream card at the time of its launch, but as a high school student with no job, I just couldn't afford it. In November 2017, I finally got to play with a superclocked version, six years after launch, and found that with a few games turned down to 720p, it could still produce decent frame rates, except for games like Assassin's Creed Origins. Origins, which, yeah, the less said the better. Clocked at 900MHz, this 1GB card was ideal for those who didn't have an extravagant budget, but still wanted a decent HD gaming experience. In an unexpected move, Nvidia later launched a special edition 448 CUDA Core 560 Ti based on the GF110 architecture, as opposed to the GF114 GPU found in the standard 560 Ti. This performed closer to a GTX 570, though AMD's 6950 at the time was cheaper and almost as fast. Now another excellent addition to both the Fermi and 500 series lineup came in the form of the 550 Ti, launching at just $149. 
At this price it was perfect for budget builders looking for a decent gaming experience at a reasonable price and didn't require too much power to run, with Nvidia recommending a 400 watt power supply and one 6 pin connector. The 550 Ti filled the gap between the GTS 450 and the GTX 460 and ran on a modified version of the 450's GF106 chip named GF116. At less than £100 here in the UK it was almost as special to me as the later released Maxwell based 750 Ti and it would still be an ok card for all you esports game fans out there, running titles like Overwatch just fine with reduced settings. With Nvidia ending new driver support for Fermi cards and switching them to legacy status, it means that if you're running a Fermi based GPU, you won't have access to certain optimizations for specific games included in driver updates because, well, you won't have access to said driver updates. You will however still receive any critical security updates until January 2019. All I can say is thank you Fermi for your 8 years of service to many of us PC gamers out there and thank you all for watching. Now I know I didn't cover every Fermi card out there and I may have missed your favourite so if you've had any experience with this architecture please let me know your favourite Fermi based card down below in the comments as well as if you still run one in your main rig. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on it. If you didn't, leave a dislike on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.